Oh. Yesterday I asked you uh, who was the developer, who was the tester, who was the designer, and whatnot, but I forgot to ask you who does the e-base. <laughs> oh, come on, you're lying. Okay, so our next speaker is Marian, and uh, by the way, he's been giving this awesome uh, post desk uh, about getting user group. Uh, beer pants. Yeah, you're a beer, beer pants, and I think you have also stickers. Yeah, these are stickers. Cool. But although he's giving positive stuff, he's going to be talking about my SQL and performance optimization. This is something most people get wrong, and uh, Mario will show us how it's done. So please welcome him. So, uh, first of all, uh, I'm a system architect of uh, SiteGround for the past 10 years. I also organize uh, OpenFest, uh, Bulgarian Pro Workshops, uh, Linux User Group Bulgarian Meetings, and some other conferences. In my spare time, uh, when I have some, uh, I teach Network Security and Linux System Administration in Sofia University. So, uh, I have some experience with uh, systems. Now, uh, first, this talk uh, may sound like a uh, promotion for MySQL 5.7. Uh, it's not. Simply, it gives you more uh, flexibility in what you can do. And uh, a little disclaimer, uh, because uh, we have a lot of customers. We are one of the top five hosting providers in the world. And we have a lot of customers. And most of them run uh, not very well designed software, uh, including database queries. So uh, I wanted to show you what you can do to your queries uh, without actually writing all of them, uh, and uh, how you can optimize your usage of uh, MySQL. In our case, 99.5% uh, of the customers are using MySQL. Although I'm a PostgreSQL guy, uh, I have to work with MySQL. <laughs> so uh, most of the information that I'll give you now is written in the documentation. Unfortunately, uh, only a handful of people have read this. Uh, <laughs> and I'm meaning this part of the documentation. They have optimization part of the documentation, which is uh, uh, rarely consulted. Uh, and usually, when the shit hits the fan, you go there and try to figure out something. So uh, I'll try to prepare you for this. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I had like uh, 50 examples uh, of SQL queries uh, in my presentation. Uh, today, I have only a few. Uh, simply because uh, it would take like four hours. Uh, if this presentation was prepared for our internal usage uh, before uh, I decided to uh, make it for the web summit. Uh, you need to monitor your databases. Usually most people are doing uh, simply a short process list and watching what's happening when the problems appear. Uh, if you don't want to do this manually, uh, this is uh, one of the rare times that I will promote a, a proprietary software, but uh, Monitor is your solution to monitoring your database. It gives you a lot of information and the words that uh, will give you insights about your usage of the database. And don't worry, usually the first time you install Monoyoc and you see what it will give you, you will see around 90% full table scans. Don't worry, it's normal. <laughs> so uh, first, uh, I am sure that every one of you here is using indexes. But I'm also sure that half of you uh, are using them wrong. Uh, don't blame me. I just state statistics here. So uh, we have some uh, features in MySQL that most people don't know, like spatial uh, indexes. Who here has used spatial indexes? OK, two, three persons, four, nice. Uh, most of the people that have used these uh, indexes have used them for 
uh, geometrical uh, data. I would tell you that you can abuse this and not use geometrical uh, data, but simply represent your data as a uh, geometrical data and use these indexes to perform better queries on your uh, database. Who has used the hash indexes here? Anyone knows that there is a hash index in MySQL? Yeah, thought so. So now, uh, why we should use uh, hash indexes? Usually it's uh, nice for you to have it uh, because if you have only a simple comparison, if this exists or doesn't exist in your uh, table, it, this is the fastest index that you can get. Because it's a simple hash, you either have it or don't. It also can be uh, very useful for order bar and sometimes it's uh, even useful for distinct queries when you have subqueries uh, sub on certain fields in your tables. Uh, hash uh, indexes are not very used because most of the things that people want to do with the database are not uh, precise queries like uh, constants like do we have uh, ID of number 24 or something like this. Uh, if you want to have uh, check if this name exists in your uh, table, it's fine. You can use hash, but uh, most of the times uh, people are selecting like select like name percent and uh, this cannot be done with uh, indexes, uh, with uh, hash indexes. So they have limited exposure to your data, but they're extreme, extremely fast. <sighs> so, um, sorry. Uh, also, you can use uh, the hash. Uh, you can use B trees, uh, but uh, with the B trees, uh, you have a lot of abuse there. So most people try to use uh, B trees. Uh, B trees. Uh, directly with uh, whatever they want. But there are rules to using this, in, uh, this type of indexes. So uh, they can all be used when you're comparing two different columns, uh, they're a different type, or even if they're, not, uh, they're the same type, if their data is ordered differently, you cannot use the uh, B3 uh, indexes for comparison. This is a problem. Also, uh, when you're using like on uh, these indexes, uh, your like statement shouldn't start with percent, simply because uh, this is a wild card and uh, you, you don't know where to start on the tree. You can have a postfix uh, percent, but you cannot start it with a wild card. And uh, also, you have to limit the size of your indexes because uh, uh, not you have, but you can. This is something that most people don't know about uh, B trees. You can have a varchar field, for example, of 100, but if you know that uh, you need index only on the first uh, 50 charters, you can create a B tree index that is only limited on these uh, first 50 charters, which is quite nice because uh, these indexes are not across all of your uh, Data all there across all of your strings, but not uh, across across the full length of your uh, strings. Also, recalculating uh, smaller indexes is obviously faster. Uh, MySQL is using uh, indexes most of the time, and uh, there are a few times uh, we'll see now when uh, MySQL cannot use indexes at all. First, uh, if you have created an index that is for single column, or uh, you have a table with uh, five columns and you create an index for each column, uh, MySQL uses a single index usually when uh, he, uh, it is trying to optimize your query. So it tries to find the best index out of these five indexes. But if you have a word pause uh, which uh, spans across three of these columns, it wouldn't use the first, second, and third column indexes. It should uh, search for a single index that is covering all three columns. This is something that most people simply don't get the first time. They simply say, okay, I'll create an index 
for this field and for that field, and that's it. And when I uh, query the table with both columns, MySQL will use only one of these indexes. We wouldn't use both of them. Uh, then, uh, if you create a query uh, that is usually, uh, for example, mm, trying to query a string uh, over a column that is integer, uh, you wouldn't use uh, the index at all, simply because this is a different type and it cannot convert it from string to integer. Uh, usually this is not very obvious, simply because most people say, okay, I will never query my in, uh, integer column uh, with strings, right? Unfortunately, some people forget that there are uh, quotes, and when you quote uh, an integer, it now, uh, it's now a string, it's not an integer, and now you're not using your index at all. Uh, this is something that I hate, and I see it all the time. People thinking that uh, they have used an index, and they have created this index, and their query will use this index. Unfortunately, they use not equal. When you're using not equal, you cannot use any index at all. Uh, you can use uh, hash indexes with not equal, which is uh, uh, smaller group when you're using it with uh, not equal like this with hash indexes, but everything else <laughs> cannot be used with uh, any other index, cannot be used with not equal. This means that uh, when MySQL optimizer sees your not equal part of uh, the where calls in your query, it simply dumps all uh, indexes and goes to file sort. Four tables come, and that's it. Uh, when you have multi-column indexes, uh, a lot of people don't really know that uh, if your where calls doesn't start with the first column of uh, uh, your index, uh, your MySQL will never use this index, simply because the fields are not ordered the same. So it's very important that uh, when you have column 1, column 2, column 3 in your index, you use column 1, column 2, column 3 in your where calls. If you do even the simple thing of uh, column 2, column 1, column 3, this index wouldn't be used. It should be the same. Uh, also, if you're using, uh, like, for example, only column 2 and column 3 in your work calls, and you still have uh, the index for uh, all three of them, again, MySQL wouldn't use your index. So this is uh, a bit of... Uh, these rules you have to remember. This is a problem that uh, cannot be solved simply by mm, uh, knowing that something exists there. You have to remember that every time you write a single query, because a single query can uh, crash your database. Uh, when, you're, uh, when you have B trees in your, uh, B -trees in, uh, your index, but uh, you use distinct on the column, uh, unfortunately you cannot use the index simply because uh, uh, the B3 can have uh, uh, nulls uh, in it, uh, and if you haven't defined the column as not null, uh, it's not usable for, or for MySQL because it actually cannot satisfy one simple requirement. Is this field null or not null? So it will go uh, to full table scan. Uh, <coughs> When you have a uh, single, uh, single column index, usually would, uh, you would get uh, <coughs> worse performance when you're joining uh, with multiple columns. Uh, most of the times, actually, MySQL would try to not use this index, even though uh, its cardinality may be very, very good for you, uh, it still wouldn't use it. And, uh, <coughs> Yeah, uh, I've already told you about this. Uh, prefixing uh, alike uh, with percent will not work on uh, B3s. Yeah, uh, the order matters. Uh, and this is something that uh, I'll start to talk about. So we have this table that has so many rows. Normal query on this table takes 10 seconds. 
Now, uh, without rewriting the query at all, simply adding a uh, hint to MySQL uh, to which index should we use, uh, we decrease first time the uh, time for this query to eight seconds, then to six, uh, to six seconds. And this is without actually rewriting the, the whole query, simply adding some hints to MySQL. Uh, have anyone used uh, index hints? Okay, I like that. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, MySQL may choose the wrong index uh, simply because you have a lot of indexes for your table, but uh, it's the wrong index for your query. It didn't match it well. So you can simply tell uh, MySQL to ignore certain index. Uh, when you have more indexes, like, uh, okay, I'll show you something here. Okay. I'm not sure if you can actually see this. But uh, the query is uh, this one here. And what I will show is the number of indexes that we have for this table. There are quite a few. So uh, when you're using explain, you can actually see what's uh, using here, uh, what MySQL has decided to use. So the first thing is where we're using index, then we have again uh, some index, and finally where. Uh, you can continue with this, and the different optimizations get here uh, when, where is it? When we ask MySQL to use certain index instead of the one that uh, it actually chose to use here. So we're using a single column index. We're not forcing, but asking MySQL to use this index. What this means is that uh, if MySQL optimizer decides that uh, your proposal of using this index is uh, bad, it will again override your decision with use index. And then finally, we have uh, force index. Uh, okay, no, no, here I have don't. Uh, I have removed the force index. Here, use index actually worked when I chose different uh, uh, index here. Uh, we don't have enough time to cover the, uh, the example here. If someone wants to talk more about this example after the talk, I am available here. So we'll continue this. So use index gives you uh, ignore index, removes some of the indexes that uh, uh, MySQL can use for uh, its queries. Use index uh, is a suggestion to the optimizer to use this index, but uh, it can be overridden. And then we have force index, uh, where uh, we tell MySQL that we don't care about its decisions. We care about what we uh, know its side. And it should use this index. Uh, then uh, I'll return back to indexes later. Uh, now we'll continue with the query cache. I know that most of you have heard about the MySQL query cache and they're using it uh, a lot. Uh, unfortunately, it has uh, some limitations. And this is when you have a lot of read queries uh, to your MySQL database. Uh, it's simply... <laughs> you have to acquire a walk for each query on the query cache. So when you have uh, thousands of queries uh, hitting the query cache, they first wait to acquire the walk. So now you see that uh, even though you have query cache, uh, you, have, you get uh, worse performance simply because you're asking MySQL uh, to use the query cache. And when you enable the query cache for your server, all of your queries go to the query cache. But some of your queries are actually very small, very fast, they're actually in memory. So they shouldn't go to the uh, query cache at all. Then uh, you get uh, queries like this that uh, have functions that require time. There are different functions that uh, can trigger removal of the query cache. So this means that this query will never go to the query cache. The result will never go to the query cache because the next call to now will uh, directly uh, show a different number. 
if MySQL knows that uh, this function that uh, you're using every time is uh, returning different data, it will never uh, try to catch it. This again uh, goes to uh, random, uh, to null, uh, to a lot of functions. I don't remember all of them. And also, you can put uh, SQL no cache in front, uh, in the beginning of your select. This means that uh, your query will never go to the query cache. It will never ask for walk. So it will be fast. It will stay fast because uh, it's a small table. Like what I have seen is a, a, a table of 10 lines, 10 rows, not, nothing else. When uh, the server is hit very hard by the read queries, selects, this simple select of these 10 rows actually takes 5, 10 seconds. And these seconds are going directly to the query cache log. You can query the data, but you simply can acquire the log to check if it is in the cache. So, not very good. You can optimize these very, very easy by adding only this thing. You don't need to change your uh, plan for your query. You simply add this. Then uh, you have to know that uh, this option is per query. So uh, this means that you have to change all of your queries for your session. This is not very good. But you can apply it for the whole session by disabling the query, the query cache type. So now when you have connected to MySQL, all of your queries for this connection will not be uh, cached. Unfortunately, this means that uh, the queries that you really want to get from the cache will also wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be cached, wouldn't be returned from the cache. So uh, you have to compromise here. You have to find uh, the balance between a single connection uh, disabling of uh, all of your uh, cache or uh, disabling the cache per query for uh, your problems. Depending on your software, on your usage of the database, it will be different. Then uh, query cache uh, is disabled as of uh, 568. Why? <laughs> Uh, it's disabled because the uh, default storage engine is uh, IMDB, and IMDB actually uh, have additional cache, and that is the IMDB buffers. And sometimes, uh, most of the times, uh, the query cache is uh, slower in returning the results than uh, the uh, IMDB storage engine. This is why uh, Oracle decided that uh, it would be nice to disable uh, the query cache by default and enable it only when you uh, actually need it. Uh, <coughs> so now, what uh, result sets? And uh, here I'll give you an example. We had a client, uh, we still have this client, that uh, came to us, uh, he was on a single machine, uh, everything worked on uh, his website, then uh, we created a distributed system for him, uh, a lot of servers, and his web nodes uh, requested all the data from MySQL over the network now. And what happened, uh, what we saw was that uh, this guy, for every page load of uh, his index, he was pulling 250 megabytes of data from uh, MySQL. From every page load. So what's happening is that uh, the MySQL is fine, it can return the data, uh, it's okay. The problem is that the network is not uh, big enough. Uh, we were connecting him first on 100 megabits, then on uh, 1 gigabit. Even 1 gigabit is not enough for this person, for this type of usage. So we have to upgrade this guy to uh, 10 gigabit network on it uh, to serve the data out of uh, his MySQL. And uh, the stupid thing here is that uh, he actually didn't need that data at all. So uh, there is a solution to this. Uh, maybe he really needs this data and he really needs these 250 megabytes of rows uh, to each of his web nodes. So uh, we added uh, proxy SQL uh, on each of the web nodes to cache the result set. We cache it only for uh, one or two seconds. This is enough for uh, most of uh, his queries on the index page. So now, instead of pulling 250 megabytes uh, on each query, uh, we're pulling 250 megabytes uh, every one, two seconds from each web node, which is a lot less. Uh, you can cache 
a lot of different, uh, you can catch different queries by simply um, defining the regular expression for your query that you want to, uh, to catch. But you have to define particularly every query. It's not like uh, the MySQL query cache. You have to define what you want to cache. And be very careful what you're caching because you can actually cache a write. You don't want to cache, uh, delete, uh, <laughs> update, insert, uh, because these wouldn't reach the, uh, the new uh, the new IDs that you push, the values that you push, wouldn't reach the server because you already cached the insert. Which is strange, but you can do this very easily by simply deciding, okay, I'll uh, do select dot asterisk, but uh, you have an update query, which is update uh, parenthesis select as uh, and so on. So. Uh, <laughs> you see how easy it is to match with a regular expression update, even though you didn't want to uh, do that. Uh, MySQL has different storage engines, and as UDB is, uh, IMDB is the standard now, uh, you have to know some things about it. Uh, MySQL can choose uh, more than one index for your query, uh, but when you're pushing down indexes uh, directly to the storage engine, IMDB will use only a single uh, index. It wouldn't try to uh, check other indexes. So the optimizer has the worst job here to decide which of all of your indexes should go to the storage engine. Uh, indexed columns cannot contain any known uh, values because uh, this breaks the index. Uh, it's better to create a column that is uh, not known, insert the data there. And if there is a column that may be known, declare it as uh, uh, known, so you know that the default values are these. This means that you're telling the optimizer that this column shouldn't have any nodes. And this is very important for uh, checking which index is uh, uh, going to be most important for you. Because if uh, the optimizer knows, uh, knows that uh, you have nodes in certain column and you don't have nodes in uh, another column, the column that doesn't have nodes uh, may be optimized out simply because uh, uh, other rules of your where statement uh, dictate that uh, it's not possible to uh, have both nose and non nos uh, in your uh, result set. LDB uh, also suffers from uh, locking overheads. So uh, it's a good idea when uh, your queries are actually only uh, read queries. You really know that there is no right based on this select that you're doing. Uh, it doesn't use any uh, built-in function or uh, your own function procedure that changes anything on uh, your data. You should start your transactions uh, with uh, start transaction return. This means that uh, you're telling him to be, uh, I'm not changing anything. Don't worry. Uh, don't try to walk, to acquire a walk for this table or for that table. I'm simply reading. So uh, this changes the way uh, MySQL uses, uh, optimizes your query and also uh, changes uh, the path your query takes to the storage engine. Uh, about MySQL now, uh, all of us are still using MySQL. Uh, some things that most of us don't know. Uh, I didn't know that uh, before, I think, uh, November last year. Uh, you have to uh, tell MySQL regularly uh, that uh, it needs to analyze the table again. What this does is uh, checking the indexes and checking your data and also creating statistics for your table. These statistics are very important for the optimizer. These statistics include information about how many rows you have in your uh, uh, table, what's the cardinality of uh, all of your indexes currently, uh, what is the uh, biggest column on your uh, data set, uh, how many uh, holes do you have in your data. So uh, a table with uh, removed 
which removed uh, rolls from it in the middle uh, are holes in the table. So uh, this gives uh, insights to the optimizer to decide which index would be more appropriate for uh, your queries. So uh, running this uh, on your tables regularly is uh, uh, required now. Uh, this is something that in PostgreSQL is done automatically, but <laughs> uh, with MySQL, you have to do it uh, manually and regularly for MySAM tables. You can also do it with MySAM check. Uh, then the other thing is MySAM uh, has a problem with uh, the data that you're storing from the disk. What's happening is uh, you created the table and uh, your queries were perfect, your indexes were perfect, and three months later, uh, you now have queries that are querying most of your table uh, by the second or third index uh, that you created, and your data is actually ordered uh, by your primary index, the first index. The order of the data on the disk, I'm talking about this, on the hard drive. So, uh, your, your queries get your data, but uh, the storage format is not optimal now because uh, you're querying your table based on your third index. So what you can do is uh, you can use my, uh, my sum, uh, check and to tell it to reorder the data on the disk based on uh, one of your indexes and you're simply telling the uh, index number. So. If, it, if this is the third index, you simply say free here. This is uh, IO intensive operation, so keep it mm -hmm. tried first on the backup servers before you do it on the live servers. Uh, it may crash your uh, MySQL when you're doing this. And by crash, I'm not uh, telling you that the MySQL dem uh, demon will die. You will simply uh, have a lot of sleeping queries, a lot of waiting on your queries while, while you're doing this. So mm, try it first on another table. Uh, avoid very complex select queries on my sum tables simply because uh, frequent updates on uh, my sum tables uh, usually block the whole table. So uh, when you have a um, complex select, uh, it will block on different parts of uh, your my sum tables that uh, you have uh, selected. So try to keep it as simple as possible with my sum for complex data. That, uh, complex uh, <coughs> joints and stuff like this, uh, you should go with IMDB. Uh, how many of you know about concurrent inserts? One, two, three people? So my ISM supports concurrent inserts uh, similar to uh, what uh, IMDB does, but it's uh, a hack. So you can append to the back of the uh, table uh, simply by, mm, okay, uh, by default they are disabled. Uh, of, um, sorry, uh, by default they are uh, auto detected. If it is possible, it will use it. So how uh, this is done? If your table doesn't have holes in it, missing rows in the middle, uh, you can insert uh, concurrently to the uh, end of the table without a problem. So uh, this auto means that you're detecting if you have any rows uh, missing in your uh, table and then inserting appending to the back of the table. If you, uh, this here should be two, sorry. <laughs> uh, the last one. Uh, so uh, always uh, means that uh, even if you have deleted roles, uh, you are asking MySQL to append to the table, append only to the table uh, concurrently. This means that uh, when you have selected this option, and this is an option for your session, not for your query, this is an option for your session, you uh, set it up and you can issue multiple inserts that uh, can be uh, concurrent. If you have two sessions that uh, have concurrent inserts uh, enabled, actually both of the sessions can concurrently insert uh, in the same table. Uh, what was it? Yeah. Uh, try to avoid uh, wire blob and text uh, in uh, my sound. 
I know that most of you are using that. Uh, if you remove this, these three types of uh, columns from your my sum tables, you will get a uh, constant static definition of your tables. If you add even one of these columns uh, to your table, now uh, it switches to dynamic uh, storage, which means that uh, you may change uh, very easily to change the order of the fields in uh, the data file. Uh, you may change uh, uh, not only the order, but uh, the types uh, that you have in your table, and this will not change anything in the data file. While when it is static, uh, when you are running Canalize table, this also may rearrange the data uh, on your disk uh, for uh, optimal usage. And here I have to tell you, most of these things, they are optimizations for uh, rotational hard drives. So most of you know that uh, when you hit the limits of I.O. on your machines, you simply request SSDs. <laughs> and uh, these uh, optimizations now are somewhat useless, simply because uh, SSDs can uh, handle uh, thousands of uh, IOPS per second and random IOPS also. Uh, with my son, uh, it's not a very good idea to uh, split one large table, large by the number of columns that it has, uh, to split it in smaller uh, tables. Why? Because uh, my SAM is optimized for disk seek, so uh, when you're not using SSDs, uh, with normal hard drives, you go to the, you would seek to the data on the hard drive, and then you get all the data. So even though you may not use all the data, you're now on, uh, on this particular place in, on the hard drive, and uh, you can get all of your data or simply one or two columns of your uh, all. So splitting this would mean that uh, after you get these two columns, now you have to create, uh, to seek again to a different place on the hard drive and get uh, the rest of the uh, the rest of the data. Now, uh, I will contradict with myself with this statement in a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, now, finally, uh, who has used delayed uh, writes here? Nobody? Oh, one person. So, the delayed writes. Uh, when you're creating a table, you can actually uh, tell MySQL that uh, you want to uh, write the indexes later. So you're updating or inserting or deleting from this table. Uh, usually this requires a lock on your table and then uh, uh, update on your index. Okay, uh, this is fine, but uh, your indexes uh, may take a while to update when you have, for example, 10 or 15 indexes. I have seen uh, tables that have more indexes than columns. So uh, when you update these indexes, it takes a lot of time. And uh, you cannot actually uh, finish your query uh, before uh, the indexes are updated. With delete key writes, this means that uh, your indexes uh, will be written uh, later on. <laughs> uh, there's a small problem here. If uh, your MySQL crashes, before it actually forces the new indexes to the uh, hard drive, you would have to re-index when uh, you start MySQL next time. Uh, but compare this with the performance that you get, uh, it's better to use this uh, uh, delayed, uh, delayed key writes. Also, you have to know that you're not losing the data, you're losing a key. So, okay, uh, performance will be a little bit uh, worse uh, when uh, MySQL crashes and you're recovering it, but uh, you should have a spare one. <laughs> uh, this is the main part of my presentation. This is what you can do to optimize, to tell MySQL what you want to actually do with your query. Unfortunately, the part that is in blue is only from MySQL 5.7. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Even I'm using uh, five, six on uh, most of our machines, and uh, I'm considering upgrade for these things. <laughs> so uh, you can change 
of how the optimizer is taking its decisions by simply uh, telling it what you want by using this op optimizer switch uh, option. Uh, you can uh, select it per uh, session and uh, I'll try to explain some of these things, not all of them. First, uh, uh, multiple index scans. Uh, when you have a single index and you have holes in it, so you have removed some uh, rows uh, from your table, uh, what's happening is that uh, MySQL will first uh, scan the index to the first part, then seek to the next part of the index, then seek to the next part, and so on. So sometimes uh, this is not very useful because uh, what you have uh, given as a where clause uh, creates like thousands uh, different sub uh, index scans. So it's not a single index scan, but uh, like thousand different index scans. So when this happens, uh, MySQL may simply decide to throw away your key and uh, start using your uh, start using your uh, full table scan. Since I don't have enough time and I have like 15 more uh, slides. Uh, you can uh, disable the merge of uh, those uh, index scans and simply do full scans of the index. Uh, you can define the algorithm that you can use uh, for these index scans. Uh, and keep in mind that your indexes that uh, don't actually match most of your co columns, uh, not columns, rows, uh, definitely slow down the intersect algorithm. Uh, Batch key access and nested loops. You can change the way uh, optimizer is uh, using your queries uh, for uh, joins. So first, block nested uh, loop joins are simply uh, full uh, full scan of all of your tables based on uh, the where calls that you have given. But uh, if you use uh, batch key access, uh, you can batch these from uh, the outermost uh, query to the innermost query, meaning that the outermost query may select like uh, 10 or 10 uh, or 1,000 uh, rows and give those uh, rows uh, to the most inner uh, query in, in, your jo in your join. So what will happen is you will get better performance because all of the lookups uh, inside the loop are done uh, from memory. This uh, doesn't work for all of your queries, so you should check uh, if uh, batched or block nested are uh, better joined optimizations for you. This you can tell the optimizer to do. Uh, materialization is uh, a scheme for optimizing by simply creating temporary tables. You can disable this. And for temporary tables, I don't have this in the presentation, Put them in the uh, TumbleFS. Uh, you can create temporary file system which is in memory. So all of your temporary uh, tables are created instead uh, instead of the hard drive in memory. So now you get the performance of the memory without uh, the overhead uh, of the hard drive. Exist strategy is used every time you uh, have uh, nodes that can have to be compared in joints. So uh, in joins with subqueries. Sometimes maybe you would uh, want to disable that and try to with materialization because it's faster. Uh, you can control it with this. No, and I can control it with this. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Finished already? Yep. One minute. No, like 10 seconds. Yeah. Uh, this is for security. Uh, you need to read this uh, paper because all of your uh, transactions are broken. <laughs> I mean, it. thank you. Okay. Thank you. All your transactions are broken, and we will continue.